Luke chapter 15, and we're beginning from verse 31. Thank you. It's going to work like that. Luke chapter 15, and from the verse 31. His father said to him, Look, dear son, you have always stayed by me. And everything I have is yours. Please, I need you to underline and take notice of that. You have always stayed by me. And because you have stayed by me, everything I have is yours. We had to celebrate this happy day for your brother was dead. And has come back to life. He was lost. But now has been found. Somebody says, my brother has been found. Um, I'm going to look through this text very quickly. I need you to follow me with all the attention that you can find. This will not be the first time you are listening to any message on the prodigal son. I don't call it the prodigal son. I, I call it the parable of the love son. Jesus never actually called it the parable of the prodigal son. It's actually the writers of the Bible that put that as a topic or a title for it. Because even in his prodigality, there are some lessons to learn from him. And I've heard a lot of preachers lambast this young man, but they do not understand the essence of the story. It's a parable. A parable is a story that is told to teach lessons. So somebody has to be the antagonist and somebody has to be the protagonist. It's unfortunate that sometimes God tells a story of life and unfortunately you happen to be on the wrong side of the story. Sometimes God is trying to tell a story to your family. He's trying to tell a story to your community. He's trying to tell a story like he's told a story with me. A young boy that was struggling with an addiction to masturbation. And I'm sure that if he saw me in those times in Fadama, in Accra, following all my dream in life was to become a bouncer. You can laugh at me. Your boyfriend also had the same dream. No, I had to hit you hard because of the way you were laughing. I had to, I'm, I'm just hitting you back because I'm not going to let you go scot-free. All I saw in my community growing up was big men, guys who had no job, spending time in the gym, and they look so powerful. Sometimes when we are playing football and it's not even a goal, they say it's a goal and we agree that it's a goal. So I realized that if I grow up, I want to be a macho man. And it landed me into all kinds of gang activities. I'm not about to give you all that story. But the truth of the matter is that sometimes your exposure places a limit on how you can become or what you can become. Sometimes you are only a victim of God's storytelling. Because our life, all of our life is part of his story. The word history is actually God telling his story. And if there is anybody here on the wrong side of his story, I see God turning the story around. Uh, I don't know who I'm talking to, but I see. If you give me the privilege to rename this parable, I'm going to call it the parable of the love of the father. Look, his father said to him, my dear son, you have always stayed with me and everything I have is yours. But this, your brother has come back. We see an interesting scenario. Watch this. Watch many of, how many of you know the story of the parable of the... Go and read it because I used 10 minutes to jump. So, go and read it. I'm just going to... <laughs> I could have told you the story in five minutes. But you were enjoying it. <laughs> so, let's just go. We assume you know the story or don't you know the story. Now, but you remember the point where the son... The prodigal, the one you call prodigal, is coming home. And the Bible says the father runs out to meet him. And brings him through the gate into the house. But watch this. The older son who stayed, whom pastors glorify in this story. The Bible says that when he came and heard the noise and the party, he entered the gate but he refused to enter the house. He stood at the door refusing to enter because he says, I've stayed with you all this while and you never gave me a fatted cow or did anything to me. Isn't it interesting that in the same house, 
While some are living, there are those who have stayed in the house but have the wrong attitude. And sometimes, just before you accuse me of, of my not being able to come to church, mm, just before you accuse me of me not being as spiritual as you are, I also see an offense against you that even though you are still in the house, you still have a bad attitude. Why does my, the love of God for my life offend you? Can I just be free and talk about it? You know what I'm saying? You're just bitter about my, my breakthrough just because God loved me. It's not working there. The way the ladies love is that. Well, <laughs> Let me get back to my Accra accent. Chese. Mi chese. But in there is also the story of the love of our father. Who always meets us at our point of weakness. The younger son went out, was far from the house, and God still came out to meet him in the streets. The older son was in the house, but was bitter, and God still came to meet him at the door. Which means no matter how close or far you are, God still has a plan to meet you at some point. And I, I came to talk to people who serve in the house of the Lord. Never let anything or anybody make you bitter. I may not be able to finish my message, but allow me to flow and bless you because I have 27 minutes. But listen to me. Sometimes you have stayed in the house. You have worked in the house. You have prayed. You have served. And it looks like those who did not serve like you did. Are being blessed more than yourself. But you see I use the phrase looks like. Because that is the illusion that the enemy paints to you. Oh man, let me just preach. The father says to the son, because of your ability to stay, you didn't know that everything I have is yours. Your blessing, your marriage, your increase, everything you ever need to live. He said, According as his divine power has given us all things that pertains to life and godliness. You never lose anything staying with God. Every sense of lack you have if you have been consistent with God and this house is an, illu is an illusion or an illusion. It's a mirage. That has been the formula of the devil from the beginning. Did God really tell you not to eat of this fruit? He said, yes. He gave us everything except for this one. He gave us 99% except for the 1%. And the devil manages to convince Eve that you are losing so much. Because God gave you a job. Even though you're single, he gave you a house. You have two cars. One that you give to that boyfriend who doesn't have a job. Uh, I don't want anybody to hit me with anything. Let me come close to the choir. That's why I have friends in the choir. Um, I don't like the looks on certain parts of the church. and I'm beginning to feel unsafe. I should stay here. Thank you, ma. Thank you. You love me and I love you too. 
And just because you failed one exam. Uh, did I dial your number? <laughs> You're beginning to convince yourself that God didn't really love me after all. A paper you can rewrite. An exam that may never really determine your destiny after all. Because that's somebody's assessment of who you are. But they were not there when God was deploying you. He said, before you, you were born and formed in your mother's womb. I knew you and I ordained you as a prophet to the nations. You were predestined to be great. What, what are the popular universities in New Jersey? What? Harvard. Princeton. New, what? Whatever. Rockers. Rockers cannot determine your destiny. I think the church is somewhere here. I said. The biggest threat. To your manifestation of destiny. The biggest threat to your exploit. Is for the enemy to shake you. So you lose your staying power. And watch this. In the life of both sons. The enemy just wanted them to leave home. The radical left was coming back as prodigal. And the stable now doesn't want to enter the house. Wow. Mama Eunice, that's the interesting thing. That's the, the pain that pastors go through. While you're trying to bring another sister in, another committed member says, I'm leaving the church. While we are winning souls into the church, souls also want to leave. Because I've been believing God for marriage. And I heard there's a church in the corner where people really marry. Yeah. Oh, I just dialed the number and I'm preaching. If you, you, are, you are a good church member. You, you, are, you are very solid, is it? And so you lack stability because a certain illusion. This is where we named you. This is where you were born. This is where we fed you milk. This is how you went through school and went to university. When you think the God of Pastor Asma has helped you through university, college, all this while till today. But that God cannot give you a husband. So now you are at a point where you are going to look for a husband. Tell somebody you can't do me nothing. I'm covered by the blood. <laughs> are you here? The devil always wants to fight your stability. And as the year comes to an end, there are many people who are about to do an assessment. And they will forget all the things God did January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November. And in December, all of a sudden, the enemy makes you feel anxious and depressed. And you feel like you've had a wasted year. That's why the psalmist said, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Some of you need to buy a green board, a formica board, and put it on your wall. And every single thing that the Lord does for you, write it there because you have the tendency to forget. You need to buy a logbook. Because by December, you are forgotten the God that gave you a job in January. And because you don't have a promotion in December, it looks like God did nothing for you. You, you have been here and everything I have is yours. You've never come to the point, my son, where you've had to fight with pigs for food. And sometimes it takes us being like the prodigal son, losing everything to understand that we had everything with God. So the father will watch the son go. He, he knew it. Uh, I'm preaching to you from my spirit right now. My notes is not going to work because the, of the time. So can I talk to you from my spirit? The father knew that this guy has not de developed enough intimacy with me 
and he does not have capacity to handle what I'm about to give him. But I'll still give it to him anyway. I know he will come back. And there are some of you that sometimes God will just allow you and watch you go and come back. A son that has access to everything is now fighting over food with pigs. And the Bible says when he came back to his senses. And... Uh, I'm just quoting the scripture. I'm not going to try to explain that part because trying to explain that means I'm going to tell you that may the Lord help you to come back to your senses, but I won't say that. You don't do that on Pastor Joe's altar. He's a very nice person. He will never say the way I, I, I mean, I was about to say it. No, uh, mommy. Mommy, you won't even say it like that. But the Lord is about to upgrade your senses. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is, is that worse or better? It's nice. Is it nice? Or oh, the Lord is about to help your sense of appreciation. Yeah, the Lord should help me. Can you pray for me now? <laughs> Psalm 1. There is no true exploit without consistency. Psalm 1, verse 1. Clifford, the notes didn't work. The moment I started singing, I knew that Atija. Atija is the Hebrew word for things fall apart in the center canoe. Mm -hmm. Someone. Oh, the joys of those who, did not, who do not follow the wicked or stand around with sinners or join with mockers. Verse 2, quickly. But they delight in the law of the Lord and they do meditate on it day and night. Verse 3. They are like trees and the key word there is planted. Along the river bank. So where you are planted, it says they bear fruits each season and their leaves never wither. That's exploits. Each season, in the summer, you're doing well. In the winter, you're doing well. In autumn, you're doing well. In spring, you're doing well. If only you can learn to be planted. Let me give you something to take home in 15 minutes. God bless you. Let me give you something. Why many people cannot be consistent? Why many people quit in their relationship with God? Why many people quit from the house of the Lord? Mama Eunice, the Lord said to me, we're praying into, we just finished, actually today is the last day of our 40-day fast in our ministry. And the Lord said to me, next year, many people, are, many pastors are going to quit ministry. And so I went on Google to check the statistics and it's even worse than what God told me. Because there are many people who are disappointed in God. Because the devil has managed to let them feel that being with God is a waste. Why many leave? Why many quit? Why many people stop along the way and are never able to do or become what God has said for them to become? Can I help you? Number one, number one, number one. Because of what they want. Can I tell you something? You have to come to a place to learn how to ask people, what do you want from this? Amos chapter 3 verse 3 says, two cannot walk together except they be agreed. There are some of you ladies, a guy comes to you and he's looking for a cook, but he thought he's looking for a wife. And the moment you said, I cannot cook. He said, I still like your hair. So you do a very nice wedding and now he's forcing you to cook something you don't like to do. But I encourage you to learn to do. If your husband likes to eat meals that you cook, then you have to learn how to do it. But the problem is you did not agree on cooking. 
So now cooking has brought tension into your house. Because when people do not get what they want, they become dissatisfied. From your journey and your relationship with God, please, what do you want from God? David said in Psalm 27 verse 4, one thing I have asked of the Lord, one thing. And that thing I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. And to gaze upon his beauty, which means for David, God is enough. He came to church for God. To gaze upon his beauty and to inquire in his temple. What you want from God is what you seek after. And the moment you get what you truly want from God, this church will be useless to you. So there are people who came here for marriage. The moment they marry, you know, my hubby, Hubby, hubby said, uh, we couldn't make it to church because my hubby had a headache. My, 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 my baby, my mommy, my daddy, they were seven in the choir. But the moment they got marriage, you won't see them again because they followed God. One thing have they sought and that they sought after, that they will marry and do a wedding. And after Pastor Joe blesses the wedding. Do you seek God for God or you seek God for his things? Immaturity will always let you trade relationship for things. And so what the young son does, he went to the father. Can you imagine? And said, don't you think it's time to give me the portion of my inheritance? Father says, I'm not dead. Actually, in Hebrew culture, that was one of the biggest crimes. It's almost equivalent to treason. What that means is that significantly, this young man was seeking the death of his father. So when you read the Greek rendition of that same scripture, the Bible says, and the father divided inheritance and gave to him. The, the Greek says, and he gave him his life. So as far as the father was concerned, the son killed him. There are some of us who are willing to kill for the things we want and at a point when we want things we don't care about the relationship anymore yeah you just came after me for my hmm. and the day I finished sleeping with you I've, I've now seen that when I call you when I text you I get a blue tick and sometimes you have to be careful what you give because there are some things when you give you can never retrieve them and there are some people who are with you. The moment they get what they want from you, they are done with you. And sometimes to keep them, you have to keep some things from them. I gave you that for free. There are some people to keep them close to you. Keep your treasure away from them. Because one thing they desire. And that one thing they will seek when they gave you the hotel room number. That they will dwell in you. <laughs> And gaze upon your beauty. And inquire in your temple. They will enter your temple. They will enter your temple. It's an unsafe part of the church. Let me, let me come to the middle part. I said if you give them the chance, they will enter your temple. And desecrate the temple. And misuse all the instruments. They will just turn everything upside down. They will just mess your house. They will just... Oh. Oh. Just, just destroy your temple. They will just finish. They will empty your temple. That's how come when you finish doing that thing, you feel empty. Hey, where did I put the chair in the temple? <laughs> Mommy, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to mess up the temple here. Yeah. 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 Desecrate the temple. Yes. They just mess up your temple. This is how, this is how they left you. They left you empty, tattered, battered, destroyed. 
picked your bag, put it there, destroyed your life. It's everything. You just... Matthew 6.33 Are you destroying the temple or you are building it? Some of you, your temple is due for renovation. Mula, come and renovate the temple for me. Take everything where it belongs. And I see God restoring somebody's life. He's bringing back the glory. Whatever they took away from you, I see God bringing and putting your life back in order. God sent me here as an apostle to the next to speak to you that whatever you lost, whatever life took away from you, oh my God, whatever life has desecrated and reduced you to, I see God adding back to your life. This is the house of restoration. Am I right? Am I? Oh my God. For the Lord will restore unto you the years that the palm web, the canker web, and the caterpillar has eaten. I see the father walking to the gate and meeting up with the son and says, my son, I know they messed you up. I know they destroyed you. I know they brought shame to you. But I've come that you will have life. For the enemy came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I I have come that you will have life you will have life and have abundance you will finish this year mommy said it in the morning your hands will not be empty when you are leaving 2023 whatever they took i see god doubling it for you double for your trouble i said double for your trouble double for your trouble receive restoration I said receive restoration whatever money you lost in business you lost your self-esteem you lost your good name you are a princess you are a prince but now you are an eagle but now you are eating with vultures I see the God of Bishop Franco for Swapia I see the God of restoration, the ambassador of hope, the God of this house, the God of my big brother, oh, Pastor Joe Asma. I see that God bringing you restoration. Whatever you lost in January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, God is bringing it to you. I don't care how many more days it doesn't take God days to change a man's life it doesn't take God hours it doesn't take him minutes it can take him a microsecond ah, tomorrow about this time tomorrow about this time tomorrow about this time God is bringing order in your life tomorrow about this time God is putting your life back in shape he's reshaping your finances he's reshaping your future Shout restoration! I don't think I can give any more of my points. He messed up his life. He messed up his life. He messed up his future. But God gave him another chance. He was shy. He couldn't come back home. He was at the gate. But the Bible says, when his father saw him afar off, we serve a God who only needs your intention so he can give you attention. The moment the son 
made his mind to go back home God gave him attention and he says come I don't know but I want to pause in my message over here and invite somebody you feel so far from God you can't even come close to the altar you feel this is my message but I don't qualify I don't matter I see the power the father restoring your stay in power he says come back home all nations is where you belong this is your church this is your home if you are here like that I want you to raise your right hand to Jesus and say Lord I'm coming back to the heart of worship I'm coming back to stay long in prayer this one thing I seek and that only I desire and that only will I seek that I will dwell that I will dwell that I'll be planted in your house that I will bear fruits going forward